Hey guys, Marshall from Going Gear Shot Show 2016 in Las Vegas here with uh, Eric Glesser from Spyderco. How's it going? Doing well. You? Excellent. So we've done this uh, three years in a row now, I think. I Maybe think so. four? Yeah. Three? Something like that. But uh, he's going to show us the new Spyderco knives or some of the new Spyderco knives. We're really excited about them. A couple of them are his. He's usually very humble about that. But uh, he has a couple of his own. Very nice designs in there. So you ready to get started? Sure. Let's get on it. Okay, I'm going to go through this line. Um, the first ones I'm going to talk about are two new evolutions of a bird model that we're making. So we have the Raven and the Crow. So it's the Raven 2 and the Crow 2. Uh, if you know these models, you'll start to see some of the differences, but I'll go through some of them with you as well. Um, one is the ergonomics are slightly different. So when you do grab the knife and you feel it and use it, you're going to feel ergonomically there are some differences. Another difference from this model from the old model is the blade shape. We have a straight spine, a full flat. Um, we do have a four-way re reversible clip on this model as well. Uh, it's got a full liners that are skeletonized, uh, open construction, very high quality liner lock, great lockup. It's got a nice, nice uh, thickness of blade, nice double distal taper. Um, one of the things that makes this knife unique this year is that we're introducing it with the USA made CTS BD1 steel. So it is uh, manufactured in China, but we are uh, bringing over the USA made uh, BD1. So this is the Raven 2. Uh, and then the Crow 2 is very similar. It's a little bit smaller. The ergonomics um, need to be changed because of the smaller profile, but fits very well in the hand. Uh, it has its, its uh, two-way reversible clip, uh, lanyard hole. It's a fairly large lanyard hole, so you'll get a, a good tie, more options in there. It also has the full liners, open construction, uh, good solid lock, CTS BD1 steel, nice full flat double distal taper. Um, so this is just a very good high quality um, value piece. Um, we're very proud of that one. Seems like you're going after the Tenacious and the rest of the value series with these. Well, we're continuing to develop a balanced knife. Uh, we're a performance-based company, um, and so whether we're going after the tenacious, if you will, ourselves, or we're just continuing to develop our knives, uh, we're always doing. One thing you're going to see different on this from our value line from Spyderco on our tenacious and persistence, persistence, ambitious, and the rest of them is that four-finger choil. A lot of our customers do like that four-finger choil because they can uh, choke up on it. And then you can also get a nice grip uh, further back. That has a nice guard on it, so if you're a little concerned about sliding up, you're not going to. Um, and so this might be good for some of those customers that do prefer that four-finger choil. So there are some small differences. Um, the next ones I'm going to go into are all spider Spydercos. And I'll just go down the line. Uh, this one was designed um, by Brad Southard, uh, very proud to get to work with him on another model. Uh, this one is very unique in the sense that it does have our Spyderco trademark hole, um, but you almost have no access to it. It's very difficult to get to. Uh, this knife is made purely to be a flipper. Uh, comes with some very nice ball bearing washers inside, some very high quality, no void 3D carbon fiber. It's got a great G10 backspacer in here with some grip. A nice deep pocket wire clip, so it's going to snug away in the pocket very nicely. Comes with a very nice full flat uh, S30V blade. Nice tumble finish, so it uh, doesn't scratch easily, leaves a, a good polish. It's a great size for carrying, very lightweight. Um, nested liners, um, so that uh, you don't have that thick titanium in there, it keeps that weight down. Reversible clip, fairly open construction. Um, the ergonomics and the beauty of this knife is um, we're very proud of. So it was great to get to work with Brad on, a, on another piece. So this is a Brad Southard Flipper. Is that the actual name, the Brad Southard Flipper? Oh, no. It's, uh, this is called the Positron. I was going to uh, say, what are you going to do when he does another one? <laughs> yeah, thank you for reminding me of the actual name of the piece. Uh, we are calling it the Positron, so very nice piece. Okay, next I'm going to talk about a knife that we're making in uh, Italy. We did make this knife last year, but we made it with a, a sanded 6AL4V titanium handle. This year we, we decided to come out with a knife again, but uh, with a very nice uh, blue coating on there. It's, um, 
very, it's fairly uh, good in its resistance. Uh, we were able to do some blasting on it too, so it, it has a little bit of a less um, shine to it. It's not as high glossy, it's a little duller, but we think it's a, a nice finish. Uh, one of the nice features about this though is that it is a slip joint or a, or, um, a non-locker. Uh, it's got a nice guard in the front, so during use, if, if we were unfortunate to close it on you when you weren't expecting it, it's probably not going to hurt you. It's a fairly safe knife. But during use, when your thumb's on top, it's very strong. Uh, it's very unlikely to close on you during use. Uh, the lock also gives it great action, great self-close. Uh, so it's some very nice titanium scales, a very interesting lock that works very well. It's got the holes to reduce the weight, a nice lanyard hole for good attachments, nice um, anodized backspacer, deep pocket wire clip, designed by Mike Reed in Italy, uh, and that, or not in Italy, in England, uh, and that's one of the reasons it is a non-locker, is because in England they do have um, laws that prohibit locking knives. Nice full flat grind, N690 blade steel, made in Italy, uh, and we're very proud to make this one. We think it's a very nice, high-quality piece. So this one's designed by Mike Reed, called the Pits. Uh, Pits is for pie in the sky, by the way. Gotcha. Uh, when we originally started the project, he said, oh, it'll be a pie in the sky, and we were able to make it happen. So. Awesome. Um, the next knives, uh, we're, um, call, we call the Mantra and the Mantra II. Uh, very similar in their ergonomics. In fact, they're the same. Um, some people refer to them as a flipping delica. Uh, so if you were to look at the ergonomics of this one in particular, you'll see uh, it's very delica-esque. Um, this one comes with 6AL4V titanium scales. Uh, comes with an open construction back, nice lanyard hole, nice deep pocket reversible clip. Uh, it's got a stainless interface so that uh, you're not going to wear out the blade too much. And it does have that nice over travel stop so you won't overextend it. Um, this one we do have the over travel or the interface on. Some knives we don't, uh, but for this knife, because it takes so much beating on the flipper uh, and the thickness of the blade, we decided to have a nice stainless interface on this one. Um, it's got a nice little radius on the kicker here, so that when it's in the pocket, it doesn't doesn't scratch very much. Nice radiuses on the the scales here, so it's comfortable. Again, a nice uh, double distal taper, full flat. Uh, this one has a functional trademark hole. Um, this one comes with CPM M4, which is uh, not a very corrosive resistant steel, but stays sharp a long time. A very good, good tool steel. And then the Mantra 2 is the same knife in its ergonomics, if you see the handles together, uh, but this has no hump. Uh, it has our trademark round hole, um, but the hole is unable to use for the opening. So it's going to be slimmer in the pocket, maybe a little bit lighter, but it also comes with the, all the other features like the ball bearing washers and radiuses and smooth action. Um, and who's the designer on those? Uh, those ones were me, uh, naturally. But, you know, the Delica was certainly an influence, as you can see. Um, so it's it, it certainly an in-house design. I just wanted to make sure people knew. It's good looking stuff. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, the next one I'm going to go into is a, an old classic. We produced this one in the early 90s. When we did produce it, it won the overall knife of the year for Blade Show. So it was a, a good design when it came out. But it was a, it's a shackle on there, so it uh, doesn't have the typical clip carry you're going to see with Spyderco. Um, so if you're going uh, whitewater rafting, rock climbing, it's, it's going to be a great attachment. Uh, this one comes in a yellow handle. In the past, we made them with a VG10, a red and black. This one's going to be made with H1, which is a completely non-rusting steel. Has great edge retention, great toughness. Uh, it's going to come with some rubber inserts here, so it gives you good grip. Uh, but it's easily accessible with the hole, good snap carry, good solid lock back. Uh, so it's going to be very reliable. Um, and so we're bringing this one back because um, mostly requests and it gives us an ability to have a non-ruster for some of those people that might be going whitewater rafting or in some environments that are a little bit harder for clip carry products. For those not familiar with H1, how rust resistant is it? It is absolutely rust resistant. So under salt water, rust resistant. Yeah, oh, under salt water, rust resistant. Now, if it went down with the Titanic, you might have to chip it out of some coral, but when you finally got it out, it'll still be there. Awesome. Uh, so. This is our H1 Snap-It, part of our salt series. 
Um, then the next one I'm going to show is a collaboration with Walter Brand and um, Joel Perella. Uh, so if you know those two custom knife makers, you'll know they make high quality products. They have very good designs, but you're also going to see the characteristics of both of those designers. Um, Walter Brand, known for his big, beautiful grinds and his sweeping blades. Uh, you'll see that Walter Brand beautiful blade there. Then uh, Joel Perella has a very distinct handle um, that he tends to use in some of his designs. So you're going to see the combination of the Joel Perella there. Um, we're very proud of the quality on this. It has virtually a, uh, well, a no void carbon fiber 3D machined. So it's going to be beautiful scales. Um, it has full titanium liners, a G10 backspacer. It's got a coated S30V blade. Now Walter Brand is known for his very high polishes, which we weren't able to get on this, this type of powdered metal. So we added a, a coating to it. You're going to see a little bit darker coating here than on the side to give it some differences in the coating. Uh, but because Walter Brand's known for those high polishes, we wanted to, to try to do something in regards to that. Uh, something that we're very proud of on this knife too is that uh, the flipper works excellent but uh, also the trademark hole is also accessible and easily used. It's got a great guard in the front for forward cutting, great hook at the back for pull cutting, uh, multiple ways to tie landers if you need to. Um, it's just a very nice uh, quality piece and a great design. We're, we're very happy to get to work with those guys on this piece. So this is the Mamba. Um, the next one, uh, designed by Peter Rosenti, uh, this is called the Nirvana. Um, this is getting some attention mostly because of the, the quality, the design, uh, the difficulty of the project. This comes with one solid piece of titanium. Um, it comes with 6AL4V solid titanium. Um, the machining you can see is contoured so it's, it's quite a lot of machining. And even the scale handle, if you look at it from the top, tends to taper. Uh, one of the challenges with this piece uh, besides that it's just a, a, one solid piece of titanium is this texture that's put on. And so what we're doing with this handle is it gets machined um, and then we, we take it off the machine, do some blasting and then it gets re-machined so that you can see this texture goes from the bottom uh, over these different contours, over the top, back down the sides, over the bend and back to the inside and that's over the complete piece. Uh, so we're very proud with the quality of, of being able to execute that. It comes with S90V, so it's a very high quality steel. Comes with ball bearings, so the action is, is very smooth. Uh, the pins, uh, as you can see, because it's solid, are, are virtually completely hidden away. Um, and so we're very happy to work with uh, Peter Rosenti on this, this knife, and we think it's a, a flagship piece for us called the Nirvana. That's the one we've seen the most interest on, definitely. We posted a couple pictures on Instagram, and everybody's like, the Nirvana, the Nirvana, the Nirvana. Uh, I can see why. Um, it's very hard to make. Uh, the fact that we were able to achieve it and get the project um, going is, is, uh, makes us very proud. Uh, we think we're going to bring it to the market at a very reasonable price, probably uh, unmatched by most people. Um, uh, so, yeah, we're very proud to be able to get this done. We're looking forward to it. Um, and then I'm going to show uh, another knife that we're just doing a sprint run of. This year is our 40th anniversary. So Spyderco was founded in 1976. Um, so with this knife, we're going to do a USA made uh, fluted 3D carbon fiber native. Uh, so you can see there's some nice uh, machining that goes through there. It gives it kind of a uh, sunburst, if you will. Some nice 3D machining. Uh, this comes with no liners, so it's going to be very light in the pocket. Also a very refined lock back, so it's very reliable, great self-close, smooth, solid lockup. We're working with Damas steel. Uh, we're using their Thor pattern uh, on this, which is also their anniversary steel. Um, so it's going to be limited. It's only a, a thousand pieces. In the future, we are going to make this model with the fluted carbon fiber, but not with the Damascus blade, and that'll be a regular production item. Uh, but for our 40th anniversary, we decided to, to use the native as the platform. So it'll be a limited production. I'm guessing probably about mid-year we'll be able to deliver that piece. And then I have uh, a couple more that aren't out. They probably won't be out for a few months. And I just wanted to give a little preview um, beforehand, uh, something some people might not have seen yet. So the next Sage, uh, what we do with Sage is we make, we um, commemorate 
uh, or we give recognition to a lock. Uh, we've done the liner lock, the Chris Reeve lock, the Blackie Collins bolt action, and um, the back lock. And so for this, we're going to use an in-house design. Um, we're going to use the compression lock. So this has nested liners, uh, skeletonized compression. It's got great grip at the top. It's the nice Sage ergonomics. This uses a G10 with a peel ply carbon fiber top layer. Uh, CPM S30V full flat grind, uh, deep pocket wire clip that's reversible. It's just a nice evolution piece. So this is our Sage 5. Um, we're guessing probably mid-year, maybe a little under. So it's a, a bit of a preview. We hear this question every now and then. Why do you use the G10 with the peel ply and just set it, instead of just solid carbon fiber? Well, when we're testing our knives, we're testing for strength, reliability, a, different, a lot of different factors. And, you know, I'm going to give an example. If you, if you break a lock, there's only going to be so many things that can break on it. You can break the blade, the lock, the spring, the scales, the pins. I mean, there's just so many variables. And so with the G10, the G10 is a very durable material. Um, in most instance, instances, it's far more durable than we're going to need. Uh, it's typically not the thing that's going to break and deteriorate. So to up, up the material to a carbon fiber quite often is not necessary. But people like the aesthetics of the carbon, carbon fiber, uh, but oftentimes they don't like the cost so much. Um, and so we're getting the strength from the G10 that we require, the nice lightweight durability, the corrosion resistance, all the great things G10 gives you, um, but we're also getting that nice aesthetic that you would get from a carbon fiber. Now this one also uses a peel ply carbon fiber, so you're going to get also a, a nice little pattern or a little grip on that. And so a lot of it is the balancing of performance and price, because price and looks and everything else, so we do have to, to provide a nice balanced performance product to the consumer. Um, the next one, again, is a bit of a preview. It probably won't be out for about six months, um, but those fans that do like uh, Butch Valentin or they like the sub hilt, we're making a slightly smaller version. Um, the Tonto, modified Tonto, if you will, isn't quite as dramatic because it is a smaller blade, but you will see there is a de uh, secondary bevel that he did on that. Does bring it some nice strength. This one has a bit of a recurve, which the, um, the larger version doesn't have. It also has that pin. Uh, Butch Valentin was the first that used a, a pin in the blade that came around and, and acted as a stop pin. So we like to, to give him credit on that. You know, everything that you see on a knife was invented by somebody. Um, and so that, that's something that Butch did first. Uh, it does have that nice uh, Spyderco trademark hole. So it's got G10 that's, that's uh, on both sides and it's got the double bolster there. The fit and finish is near perfect. Uh, so we're very proud with the quality from the top. You can see it's very nice fit and finish. Uh, it's got a little bit of a thicker handle, a little bit thicker blade, a little bit more uh, stout knife. A lot of the Spydercos are known for thin and lightweight, but some customers like a little bit more of a stout blade, particularly some of these that like um, more of a, a modified Tonto. What's the material on the bolster? Uh, this is G10, so it's polished G10, and then it's just a stainless that's dropped in there. Um, but a very nice fit and finish, so and polished G10. G10 backspacer, as you can see, full liners too that are skeletonized. And so uh, the quality, we're very proud with the quality on this piece. And uh, that's pretty much a lot of the products. Oh, I have a couple others. You want to see a couple others? Yeah, let's do it. All right, all right. let's do this. Um, these are soon to come out as well. Um, we have a series of knives we call the Ethnic Series. So this one uh, is the next in our Ethnic Series. It's to commemorate uh, an island off the coast of Italy called Sardinia. Um, so they call that knife a patata, so we call ours a patata. Um, but you're going to see a lot of the characteristics you're going to see in those ethnic knives that have been made there for, for a very long time. Um, some of the characteristics is this nice sweeping edge that goes to a belly here, that nice long uh, tip that straightens out with that, that refined uh, sharper tip here. So that blade shape is very distinct to the patatas you're going to see coming out of Sardinia. Uh, the other things you're going to see is that, that hook in the front, the hook in the back. Um, usually they have some nice 3D handle. Usually theirs are um, slip joints or, or non-lockers. Uh, so we're wanting to make ours very modern so it comes with a nice liner lock. 
uh, full skeletonized liners, 3D polished G10, uh, deep pocket wire clip. This is made in Maniago, Italy. Uh, naturally, it's a nice fit because it's an Italian uh, ethnic series knife. Uh, comes with N690 blade steel. Um, so it's really just a nice piece. It also functions very well. Um, I've found that that blade shape uh, it has a lot of great purposes, whether you're cutting your daily tasks like paper, envelopes, food. It's a, it's a very nice, nice shape. And I can see why they've been making it that shape for so long after using it. And who's the designer on that one? Uh, this one's my father, Sal. Uh, so uh, proud, proud of that design. I think it was executed well. Um, then this is another knife. Uh, again, it won't be out for a few months, but uh, it's a guy named Paul Alexander. Uh, many people haven't heard of him. He doesn't do custom knives. He's just a knife designer, so he sent us a, a design that we felt worked very well and we wanted to move forward with. Um, one of the things that we liked right away with this is that there's not a lot of locks that can go into it. You, the, we use the compression lock on this, uh, but because the way that blade sweeps into the handle and because there's not a lot of material here, uh, using liner locks and back locks and many of our other locks are, are very difficult. Um, so this has a nice guard in the front so you can hold it. You're not going to slip, slip up on it very easily. Nice uh, deep pocket wire clip. Um, S30 or VG10 full flat grind, um, very uh, smooth in the pocket for your daily carry, very safe and secure to use, uh, a good size, and so we were we were excited to work with Paul Alexander on this one. We're calling this one the Ouroboros, uh, and this should probably be out in the next few months. All right, Eric, thanks for your time. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks for the support.